Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from the AUVSI Exponential Show in Denver, Colorado. In case you're not up on your acronyms, that's the Association of Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Yeah, I know, it's a mouthful. Try saying it five times a day. If you're a viewer of the AvWeb channel, you can be forgiven if you think that drones are a relatively recent phenomenon, say the last 15 or 20 years. In fact, they go way back. The one I'm standing in front of was built by a company called Flying Cam in 1979 and 1980, and it was used for cinematography. And since then, the company has developed a whole line of these things, and we're going to take a look at some of them in this uh, short video. You may not have heard of the company, but you will have seen its work in films like the Bond series and the Harry Potter films. Emmanuel Prevenair is the principal of the company. He's going to give us a brief history, and it's really quite fascinating. But the latest model they unveiled here is called the Discovery. It has capabilities far beyond just cinematography, and the reason for that is that the technology has advanced so far that it makes it possible. Here's Emmanuel. So that's the first prototype, 1980, first drawing, 1979. Fixed camera head, no way to buy an expensive, bulky, heavy gyrosphere, half a million at that time. So you could still choose the camera angle you wanted. It could be like this, it could be straight down. You see? And did you choose, choose that before to take off? The, this is an asteroid, wide angle. And we started with the black and white video assist. You, you could see what you do, because this is film, 16. Then we moved to the flying cam 2. Still combustion engine, two stroke, same as this one. Here you see the fuel tank because no telemetry, you had to have a vision on, on your level. Here too, but it's hidden inside. You still see your fuel tank. Moving the camera was the first goal. We could do 360 roll on this one without limit. And actually on the Harry Potter movie uh, with this sequence of the, the, the awkward train, we did a 360 with a camera flying through, uh, I mean, under the tunnel. Uh, and I, believe me, when the camera is upside down, you, you mix, up, mix, up with, mix, up, mix up with the tilt and up and, til, uh, up and down. Uh, this was gyro stabilized, but not the level of sophistication we have now. So you still had to be a Formula One pilot because there was no automatic pilot at all. Uh, this was the only way to stabilize the platform and a gyro for the tail. Then we moved to the flying cam SARA, Special Aerial Response Automatic Helicopter. Uh, this one is an electric motor, up to six kilowatt, full power, independent tail rotor. As you can see, there's no mechanical connection. So depending on altitude, you can change your RPM, so you keep your full authority on the tail, which is very important for an helicopter. We can do full auto rotation. Uh, to change the battery is really, really simple. You just take it out like this and put it back in. I will have to be in front though to put it back in. <laughs> but it's as simple as that. And, and then you secure it. Uh, GPS here, GPS there, RTK code, two centimeter precision. Autopilot with PC-104 board, a big autopilot. This one is a new one. That's a generation 4.0. An autopilot with FPGA, the size of two cigarette, cigarette uh, packet. Fully adaptable. As you can see, we have here a regal scanner with two Sony camera. This gives a pulse repetition rate of 500 kilohertz. This is for the laser to scan. It's the best in the world. We try always to work with the best providers in the world. The platform can fly up to 140 kilometers per hour. Uh, this is the reason why we worked on Game of Thrones. They wanted to have that dragon to fly. They were talking 200 miles. We told them even a full-size helicopter will not make it with a gyro head at that speed. So, but we could make it at 100 kilometers per hour, forward and backwards, low above surface, and with a Red Epic and Zeiss lens, very heavy lens. Um, and then we move to the next generation, which is the Discovery. Here we are in another league. This is a turbine machine, two hours flight time, 140 pounds, 30 kilo payload, 60 pounds payload, see and avoid capability with radar, ISR, gyro head, but 
all the part here is totally modular. You could put whatever you want there, whatever you want here, or even in the back. You see those tubes? You can extend it for, to put anything here. Those fuel tank are aviation grade, crash proof, uh, with a bladder tank inside. They have been tested 15 days uh, earlier with the 50 feet drop test. Pass. <laughs> we are so happy. We use even a container of that bladder tank to go even further with Dynamo fiber, which are uh, better than carbon and Kevlar to sustain puncture. Meaning we believe we are safer than a full size using this technology. We use the same as full size uh, navigation light. Uh, I could probably make it run here. Very strong, same as full size. You're gonna blind your camera, so I'm gonna switch it off. Uh, we have a GPS antenna in front, another GPS antenna here, two meters apart. It gives us better than half a degree precision on the heading. Uh, tail, tail rotor, highly gyro stabilized. We are very specialist in, in that. Um, I'm used to say we, we move like you think. It's a thought made visible and our engineers are working in that direction. Meaning when you move your joystick, it has to give you the output that you have in your mind. And you have to have that feeling of being one with the machine. And, and actually this one, I've never flew in it. The, or, or engineer flow it. I'm, I'm really eager to fly it because I have goosebumps each time, each time I see it flying. You would be able to fly it easily because with the attitude control or GPS, uh, velocity control, you don't touch the stick, it will just stay there. You push the stick and then it's gonna go.